there's an ethical obligation to understand this, and um, there's a humanitarian issue behind at least a lot of what neurologists want to know in that measurement. Because if somebody's conscious and they can't express themselves or they can't communicate with their family members, and we could figure out using a science of consciousness a way to enhance their capacity to do that or to give some of that back by doing something intelligent. That, that's an, an inherent good, at least from my point of view, and that's kind of one of the motivations. Well, isn't there a profound ethical question which you're alluding to here? I mean, someone is in a horrible car crash. The doctor, the, the, the people on the scene say, sorry, this person is brain dead now. Do we pull the plug? Oh, and I can make that problem harder and harder and harder, and it keeps getting harder. And you are stuck with your ignorance and situations where without that model, you know that you're making mistakes. I can tell you we all are still making lots of mistakes. And you try to give the best information you can, and you let the families make decisions within the range of uncertainty. And there's a, this is a talk about judgments mm -hmm. of a, yeah. under uncertainty. This is, this is becoming more and more uncertain as the science is evolving, not less. So isn't the, the implication then that we should be much more reticent about but terminating life? Well, but the flip side of this is that you also don't want to commit people to indefinite Vigils. vigils for patients who are not going to recover. And you need to give the, you know, you, you have to give a, a reasonable assessment and you have to give a average answer because you're not working with a model. Most of what is done in consciousness science, for the reasons that we've heard today in medicine, is statistical. We, you know, somebody's in a vegetative state, they had this kind of injury, there aren't a lot of other measurements uh, that you can do often if they're in a zone where it's not certain. Sometimes things are simple. You know? I mean, sometimes the brain is dead. Brain death is death. It's not, it's not, a, it's not a diagnosis. It's not, it doesn't have a prognosis. It's a diagnosis that doesn't have a prognosis. The person is dead if they're brain dead. But if they're in minimally conscious state at, at a month after a very severe injury, things become harder. Now, you might be able to statistically estimate that their level of function might not be at X, Y, or Z, but then it's an issue of value and an issue of what uh, human uh, contact they're going to have with their family, and often the answer to that is completely unknown. And, and there's a range of what is acceptable, and there's a range of what individuals will see as a meaningful human contact mm -hmm. with somebody they love and have known for their whole life. And this happens in Alzheimer's disease all the time, right? I mean, this is something everybody's familiar with. An elderly person who slowly started slipping down out of contact, right? If you had some way to bring them back so they could talk to their grandchildren for a year, that might be a very important thing, right? It would be. And it may not save their life, and it might not mean that they wouldn't slip out of contact at some point in the future. This is the kind of thing that you know, a science of consciousness will make more law-like, predictable, and allow us to talk in a more intelligent way with people about what can and can't happen and what we should do and what should we do this? Is it something you want to do? That, those conversations are never going to be easy, but they could be better informed.